Everybody else get in line. Let's see if we can get through the line. Go. Gaming question. You got to tell me as a fellow gamer. Yeah. What do you prefer, 3.0 uh, Dungeons and Dragons or the fourth edition? You mentioned about. Uh, okay, so the fourth edition is a great game, but it's not a role playing game. It's a tabletop miniatures war game. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But, I, but I, think, I think it has more in common with uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay than it really has with Legacy D&D. Um, I enjoyed uh, a lot of 3.0. Um, I don't like the 75 pages of grappling rules, um, or as I call it, Pathfinder. Um, I, uh, I really, really, really love the D&D basic rule set from 1981. That's where I started. What's your favorite RPG, though? My favorite RPG is Fiasco by Jason Morningstar. It's a storytelling RPG. Next question, please. I'm fast. I've been sent to say hi and ask. Hi. Lately, your your characters have been rivy. Are you channeling your inner JB? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. I would answer the question in Rock 13, but I don't have the uh, macro in front of me. Next question, please. Worst TNG episode you ever had to work on? Um, was I in the battle? The battle's pretty bad. <laughs> uh, no, you know what, actually, I think Naked Now is pretty horrible. I mean, I think it's really terrible. Um, and it was a bad idea. Like, after the pilot, the way we're going to introduce these characters to the audience is by getting them all drunk. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Thank you. You're welcome. Next question. Uh, first, I'd quickly like to say, uh, on behalf of the great uh, Klingon scientist Sheldon Cooper, we died! <laughs> um, oh, and I would just like to say, game over, Moon Pie. <laughs> Two of, your, two of my favorite characters of yours are your character in the Guild, and of course, your character in uh, Big Bang Theory, nominally yourself. I'm wondering how you feel about playing villains, or at least jerks. Playing villains is great. Um, it's because the reason that you become an actor is so that you can be uh, some, someone or something you're not. Like, you just get to pretend. You get to create a character and then be that character for a little bit of time and then go back to your real life. A lot of people are surprised to find out that actors, when they're not on stage, are, are quite introverted and shy and, and, and weird. Um, because we do all of that. Like, we don't want attention when we're not performing. And being, uh, being Evil Will Wheaton is incredibly fun. And, uh, and being Fox is, is incredibly fun. And being Dr. Parrish and Eureka is incredibly fun. <laughs> these guys that are all, you know, they're, they're jerks, but they're, from their point of view, they're justified. Uh, Bill Prady said that the villain is the hero of his own story. And, uh, and when I kind of internalized that and, and realized that Evil Will Wheaton just is, Evil Will Wheaton is to Sheldon as a cat is to a crippled bird. <laughs> you know, like that's <laughs> just it's it's just uh, it's uh, or, or or he's he's just like he's such a great troll. You know, um, and I, I will tell you a very quick, very funny story about Big Bang Theory. I was in San Francisco uh, waiting for uh, waiting for a taxi. The guy comes up and he goes, "I don't want to bother you, but you're on the Big Bang Theory." And I said, "Yes, I am." And he said, "I love that show." And I said, "Thanks, I love it too. I'm really I have a great time when I work on it. And I was a fan before." And, and he said, "And you're so funny on it." And I said, "Thank you very much." And, and he said, and I, "I'm so embarrassed. But I know you play Will Wheaton, but I don't know what your name is." <laughs> Felicia was going to put a channel on YouTube and, and was going to pitch a channel to Google. And uh, in the act of pitching it, she had to put together a slate of shows. And she called me and she said, do you want to do a show together? And Felicia is one of my best friends in the world. And we work really well together. We're terrific creative partners. And uh, I just know that when she has an idea, it's going to be great. And I said, yeah, what do you want to do? And she said, oh, I was just thinking, like, maybe a thing where you review games. And I went, eh. 
I don't know, I don't want to do a thing where I'm just standing around talking, and what if we played games and, oh my god, we play, and then the whole thing just came together, <laughs> like that. And then we have a terrific producer, Sherry Bryant, and Adam Lawson, and Boyan Radakovich, and Kim Evie, are just amazing people who work really hard to, to pull the whole show together, and our editors make me look smarter and cooler than I am, and, and, uh, and it's, it's, it's the best, I think my, my, I get emails every day from people who have started game nights because of tabletop, or have started, uh, uh, were able to show their non-gaming partners why they're gamers, and that's been really great. A guy emailed me and he said, uh, every night when we finished work, uh, uh, I would come home, I'd eat dinner with my family, and then everyone would go to their own thing. And since we started watching tabletop together, we eat dinner, and then we all get together and play a board game. And we're like spending family time. games we featured on the show uh, uh, sold out from the distributor level. And I said, oh, how many is that? And he goes, 30,000. <laughs> and there are people telling me that they go to the game shop and the games, and they ask for a game, and the game the game guy says, oh, it was on tabletop. So it's cool. Like we're One of the things that I really want to do with my life is like I, just, I want to inspire people to be awesome. I want to inspire people to do great things and to be kind and to like never lose the joy of doing a thing in the in the in the, the, the like trying to be the best at it or you know like don't lose the don't lose the, the the journey for the destination and tabletop seems to be fitting with that a little bit. It's um, great and you do thanks. inspire people. Thank That's you. That's so awesome. Much. Thanks a lot. We have three minutes. Don't make me muster a nerd army, I'll do it. Three minutes, last question. You in the spiky shirt, come on. First off, first off love your t shirt. You're made of Oh, thank you. This is a nerd fighter shirt from Hank and John Green. The FTBA means don't forget to be awesome. Uh, you probably don't have time, but I was going to say you play evil characters really well. You play a dick, even though you say not to be one. Thanks. <laughs> How come you can play that so well? <laughs> that's, a really, that's a really good question. Um, I, I don't... I don't know. <laughs> Everybody has... Every actor has a type that they play very well. Uh, I took a marketing class once, and I, I wanted to learn how to market myself, and I wanted to learn how to get my agents to put me in front of casting directors for roles that made sense for me. And in this class, this, this guy talked about how every actor plays a certain type, and uh, uh, when you're playing the right type, people identify with that type on an unconscious level, and, uh, and then you, you do really well in movies. And an example he gave was John Travolta. He said Travolta was so good uh, as one of the sweat hogs, and then was so good in Saturday Night Fever, because he's playing basically a lovable loser. And then Hollywood decided, no, he needs to be a leading man now. And they put him in Irving Cowboy, which is a flop. They put him in Perfect, which is a flop. Uh, they, they start having him play these leading man characters, because he's not playing the right type. John Travolta's career pretty much dies until Tarantino puts him in Pulp Fiction as a junkie hitman who is a lovable loser. And, and that brings his career back around. And he said, you've got to find whatever it is you do. And he said, Wheaton, I think, I think you play a smug guy really well. And I was like, but I'm not smug. I'm nice. I'm good. And don't kill me on the road. And he was like, um, I just think that's what you play, and then someday you're going to be cast as a smug, kind of douchey character, and it's going to be a lot of fun for you, and you're going to go, why have I not been doing this my entire <laughs> Because he's like, look, you don't have to be who you are as a person in your roles. But he said, there's just something about you. People, and, and there was tons of market research done and everything, and the, the class and everything, and, he says, like, people just keep saying, there's something kind of smug about that guy. Do you dislike it? Not really. It's just a thing. I don't get it. And so um, when, uh, when Kim Evie asked me if I would be on her YouTube program, Gorgeous Tiny Chicken Machine Show, I said, yes, please have me play a douchey guy. And she said, great, I'll have you play an agent. <laughs> so I played a douchey agent. And from that, Felicia cast me as Fox in the Guild. And then from that, I was cast 
in the Big Bang Theory, and then on Eureka, and uh, those Leverage. are just the characters Leverage. that I play, and Leverage, yeah, I mean, those are just the guys that I play. So, these are not people I would be friends with in, uh, in, in real life. These are people who I, don't, who I don't particularly like, but it is so fun to pretend to be them for a little bit of time. I really, really, really have to end it. There's about a dozen people who hate me right now, but... No, that's fine, because they actually now it is fine. <laughs> I want to say one thing before I leave. I want to say one thing before I leave. If you don't remember anything uh, uh, from the time we've spent together today, please, please, please let it be this. A number of years ago, I had a really major sinus surgery and it involved several hours of anesthesia and a non-zero chance that I would not wake up. So uh, I did all those things that you do when you're a father and you have that non-zero chance that you will not wake up. And I sat my youngest son down and I said, listen, everything's probably gonna be fine, but uh, just in case I'm not around uh, after tomorrow, I want you to do these things with your wife. I want you to be honest. I want you to be honorable. I want you to be kind, I want you to work hard, and I want you to be awesome. And that is what I want all of you to do. Excellent. Thank you very much.